Cleopatra the Great has become virtually synonymous with the term female pharaoh. Yet, as Joan Fletcher reveals, Mark Antony's famous wife was merely the culmination of three millennia of female rulers. In the history of Egypt, during the dynastic period 3000 to 332 BCE, there were only a few women who managed to rule as pharaohs, rather than wielding power as the great wife of a male king. And among those, Hatshepsut is believed to be the first woman to rule the land with the full authority of a pharaoh. However, the existence of this great pharaoh is almost lost to the sands of time. Welcome to Crunch! Today's video is all about Hatshepsut and why she is considered one of Egypt's greatest pharaohs. Hatshepsut is celebrated as a powerful female ruler whose reign was extremely successful, and this is the same reason for the controversy. Ancient Egyptian culture was very conservative in many respects and placed no value on change or alteration in tradition. No matter how successful her reign was, a female pharaoh was outside of the accepted understanding of the role of the monarchy, and so all memories of her being a pharaoh were erased. She was forgotten as the period of the New Kingdom continued and remained so for centuries. Her existence only came to light fairly recently in history when in 2007, researchers had already announced that Hatshepsut's mummy was identified in tomb KV-60 in the Valley of the Kings. In a live science article, Cornell University anthropologist Meredith Small declared that a CT scan of a single tooth in a box with Hatshepsut's name on it perfectly matched the tooth socket in the mummy's jaw. She notes that she was around 50 when she died, balding and suffering from diabetes. Small added that despite her health problems and the post-mortem destruction of some of her images, history still remembers her as a successful ancient Egyptian ruler. Hatshepsut's image couldn't be erased because even with her weight and beard, she was a ruler and a grand one. In ancient Egypt, just like today, you simply can't keep a good woman down. Orientalist Jean-François Champollion, most famous for deciphering the Rosetta Stone, found he could not reconcile hieroglyphics indicating a female ruler with statuary depicting a male. These hieroglyphics were found in the inner chambers of Hatshepsut's temple at Deir al-Bari. Hatshepsut adopted the full titulary of a pharaoh including the throne name Matkari, which is the name most frequently found on her monuments. In this life-size statue, Hatshepsut is shown wearing the nemes, headcloth, and the shendite kilt. These are part of the ceremonial attire of the Egyptian king, which was traditionally a man's role. Despite the masculine dress, the statue has a distinctly feminine air, unlike most representations of Hatshepsut as a ruler. The kingly titles on the sides of the throne are feminized to read the perfect goddess, lady of the two lands, and bodily daughter of Re. Statues that depict Hatshepsut like this one are in a seated pose, with hands flat on the knees. This suggests that they were intended to receive offerings and would probably have been placed in less public areas of the temple, such as the chapels on the upper terrace. Her throne name, Matkari, and her original name, Hatshepsut, are both written inside oval cartouches, making them easy to recognize. But, as mentioned earlier, her name was erased from her monuments following her death, which strongly suggests that someone, most likely Thutmus III, wanted to remove all evidence of her from history. However, since the Egyptians believed that erasing one's name from history hampered one's afterlife, it is believed that whoever removed her from public knowledge did not wish her ill after death and so they preserved her name in more secluded areas. While some suggest that her name was simply overlooked in a few places out of the public eye, Hatshepsut's building projects were numerous after all, and it is certainly possible that those responsible for blotting her name out simply missed some. Efforts to erase Hatshepsut from memory were ultimately unsuccessful, nonetheless, as she is well known today as one of the greatest pharaohs of ancient Egypt. In 2016, ancient stone blocks depicting Queen Hatshepsut were discovered on Egypt's Elephantine Island by the German Archaeological Institute, providing insights into the early years of her reign. 
On several of the blocks, Hatshepsut was represented as a woman, according to Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities. This suggests that the blocks and building it came from were erected during the period part of the first female pharaoh's reign, which lasted from 1473 BCE to 1458 BCE, as the queen was depicted as a male later in her reign. According to Felix Arnold, field director of the Elephantine Island Mission, the blocks may have been part of a building that served as a way station for the festival bark of the god Knum. In ancient Egypt, barks, or sacred boats, were used to help carry the dead to the afterlife. Based on the discoveries thus far, the Ministry of Antiquities described the building's construction as a chamber for the bark of the god Knum, which is surrounded by pillars on all four sides. According to the ministry's statement on Facebook, on the pillars are representations of several versions of the god Knum, as well as other gods, such as Imi Peref, he who is in his house, Nebet Benet, Lady of the Mooring Post, and Minamun of Nubia. The years before Hatshepsut's birth were troubling times for the Egyptian New Kingdom, but the 18th dynasty of Egypt saw the return of native rulers to the throne and the peak of Egyptian wealth and prosperity. When Pharaoh Amenhotep I died without producing a male heir, Thutmose, a respected middle-aged nobleman from Thebes, stepped into the power vacuum. Around 1506 BCE, he was crowned to be Thutmose I. Under his rule, Egypt's fortunes skyrocketed the borders expanded and gold poured in. During this time, having been born into royalty as the daughter of King Thutmus I and Queen Amos, Hatshepsut grew up in the palace with the title of princess. Thutmus I fathered a male child with a lesser wife, Munafret, who became an illegitimate heir as he was only of half-royal blood. The child, Thutmus II, was married to Hatshepsut to fully signify his right to rule. During this same time, Hatshepsut was elevated to the position of God's wife of Amun, the highest honor a woman could attain in Egypt after the position of queen, and bestowed far more power than most queens had ever known. A woman holding the title of God's wife of Amun was powerful enough to dictate policy. Hatshepsut and Thutmose II had a daughter, Nefuro Ra. While Thutmose II fathered a son with his lesser wife, Isis, the son, Thutmose III, was named his father's successor. Thutmose II died while his son and heir was still a child, so Hatshepsut became regent, controlling the affairs of the state until he came of age. In the seventh year of her regency, though, she changed the rules and had herself crowned pharaoh of Egypt. She took on all the royal titles and names that she had inscribed using the feminine grammatical form, but had herself depicted as a male pharaoh. Recognizing that she was in uncharted waters, Hatshepsut took steps to legitimize her reign quickly. If her position as pharaoh were to be challenged, she was not going to allow herself to simply disappear. She legitimized her reign by presenting herself not merely as Amun's wife in ritual, but as his daughter. She claimed that Amun had appeared to her mother in the form of Thutmose I and convinced her, thus making her a demigoddess. As always, thanks for watching Crunch History. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video.